the most important thing at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust over the years was not what we did, but what we did not do. We didn't set out to build a huge monolithic temple to arts and culture in the middle of downtown with integrated parking. Instead, we turned our attention to the planning and development of a large cultural district, actually a 14 square block area of our downtown. People in Pennsylvania are very strongly connected to their communities. They're very proud of their cultural resources. The first art school in America, now the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, the oldest operating theater in the United States, the oldest town band in the United States is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. All of these institutions survive and thrive because people show up. People like to say that uh, the United States started here Philadelphia referred to as the Athens of America. Everybody is connected to the arts. The big idea was, if you change the environment, you can change the kids. Do your elbows into your legs or into your hips like this? So it supports, because if your hands are like this, they'll shake all around. So I get my fingers down inside like this, and I'm gonna pull straight back. Manchester Craftsman's got started as a pottery studio on the north side of Pittsburgh in an old row house. I lived upstairs in a sleeping bag, had pottery wheels in the basement, built a kiln out in the backyard, and started dragging kids in off the street to save their souls with clay in 1968. That first group of people that we worked with, I started getting back very positive results from the public school system. And people basically said, whatever you're doing with these kids, they're starting to change their behavior they're starting to show up at school more regularly. The grades are going up. Today, we have four primary programs. The public school program focuses in on clay, photography, digital imaging, computer imaging. Our jazz music hall really presents world-class jazz artists in a concert setting. We operate a greenhouse. 12 months a year, it's a 40,000 square foot greenhouse. And in addition to the educational programs, it's also a production space, all from the initial idea that was supported by NEA 50 years ago. Part of what we do in our arts and education program in sending in these teaching artists is to bring a little bit of Manchester craftsman skill into classrooms all over Pennsylvania. I think today, that thousands and thousands, indeed millions of people, come downtown to visit our cultural district. For one of our major festivals, uh, we brought in a, a work of art developed by a, uh, an artist from the Netherlands. His name was Hoffman, and it was an enormous mammoth rubber ducky. And we floated it down the Allegheny River and parked it at Point State Park. People were pouring in not only for the festival itself, but everybody was pouring in to show their children this enormous rubber ducky on the river. The Pennsylvania Council has been very entrepreneurial in its desire and ability to leverage the arts across population centers and across geographies so that public funding for the arts has a leveraging effect. The dollar from the council produces probably $10 in revenue across Pennsylvania for its citizens. It's a very good return on investment. Thank you to the National Endowment for the Arts and happy 50th birthday.